THE MILKMAID AND HER PAIL A milkmaid had been out to milk the cows, and was returning from the field with the shining milk pail balanced nicely on her head. As she walked along, her pretty head was busy with plans for the days to come. This good rich milk, she mused, will give me plenty of cream to churn. The butter I make, I will take to the market, and with the money I get for it, I will buy a lot of eggs for hatching. How nice it will be when they are all hatched and the yard is full of fine young chicks. Then, when May Day comes, I will sell them. And with the money, I will buy a lovely new dress to wear to the fair. All the young men will look at me. They will come and try to make love to me. But I shall very quickly send them about their business. As she thought of how she would settle that matter, she tossed her head scornfully, and down fell the pail of milk to the ground. And all the milk flowed out, and with it vanished butter and eggs and chicks and new dress and all the milkmaid's pride. Do not count your chickens before they are hatched. The Wolf and the Shepherd A wolf lurking near the shepherd's hut, saw the shepherd and his family feasting on a roasted lamb. Aha! Uh -huh. he muttered. What a great shouting and running about there would have been. Had they caught me, at just the very thing they're doing with so much enjoyment. Men often condemn others for what they see no wrong in doing themselves. The Goat Herd and the Goat a goat strayed away from the flock, tempted by a patch of clover. The goatherd tried to call it back, but in vain. It would not obey him. Then he picked up a stone and threw it, breaking the goat's horn. The goatherd was frightened. Do not tell the master, he begged the goat. No, said the goat. That broken horn can speak for itself. Wicked deeds will not stay hid. The Miser A miser had buried his gold in a secret place in his garden. Every day he went to the spot, dug up the treasure, and counted it piece by piece to make sure it was all there. He made so many trips that a thief, who had been observing him, guessed what it was the miser had hidden, and one night quietly dug up the treasure and made off with it. When the miser discovered his loss, he was overcome with grief and despair. He groaned and cried and tore his hair. A passerby heard his cries and asked what had happened. My gold! Oh, my gold! cried the miser wildly. Someone has robbed me! Your gold? There? In that hole? Why did you put it there? Why did you not keep it in the house where you could easily get it when you had to buy things? Buy! screamed the miser angrily. Why? I never touched the gold. I couldn't think of spending any of it. The stranger picked up a large stone and threw it into the hole. If that is the case, he said, cover up that stone. It is worth just as much to you as the treasure you lost. A possession is worth no more than the use we make of it. The Wolf and the House Dog There once was a wolf who got very little to eat because the dogs of the village were so wide awake and watchful. He was really nothing but skin and bones, and it made him very downhearted to think of it. One night, this wolf happened to fall in with a fine, fat house dog who had wandered a little too far from home. The wolf would gladly have eaten him then and there, but the house dog looked strong enough to leave his marks should he try it. So the wolf spoke very humbly to the dog, complimenting him on his fine appearance. You can be as well fed as I am if you want to, replied the dog. Leave the woods. There you live miserably. Why, you have to fight hard for every bite you get. 
follow my example, and you will get along beautifully. What must I do? asked the wolf. Hardly anything, answered the dog. Chase people who carry canes, bark at beggars, fawn on the people of the house. In return, you'll get tidbits of every kind. Chicken bones, choice bits of meat, sugar, cake, and much more beside. Not to speak of kind words and caresses. The wolf had such a beautiful vision of his coming happiness that he almost wept. But just then, he noticed that the hair on the dog's neck was worn and the skin was chaffed. What is that on your neck? Nothing at all, replied the dog. What? Nothing? Oh, just a trifle. But please tell me. Perhaps you see the mark of the collar to which my chain is fastened. What? A chain? cried the wolf. Don't you go wherever you please? Not always, but what's the difference? replied the dog. All the difference in the world. I don't care a rap for your fist, and I wouldn't take all the tender young lambs in the world at that price. And away ran the wolf to the woods. There is nothing worth so much as liberty. The Fox and the Hedgehog A fox, swimming across a river, was barely able to reach the bank, where he lay bruised and exhausted from his struggle with the swift current. Soon, a swarm of blood-sucking flies settled on him, but he lay quietly, still too weak to run away from them. A hedgehog happened by. Let me drive the flies away, he said kindly. No, no, exclaimed the fox. Do not disturb them. They have taken all they can hold. If you drive them away, another greedy swarm will come and take the little blood I have left. Better to bear a lesser evil than to risk a greater in removing it. The Bat and the Weasels a bat blundered into the nest of a weasel, who ran up to catch and eat him. The bat begged for his life, but the weasel would not listen. You are a mouse, he said, and I am a sworn enemy of mice. Every mouse I catch, I'm going to eat. But I'm not a mouse, cried the bat. Look at my wings. Can mice fly? Why? I'm only a bird. Please let me go. The weasel had to admit that the bat was not a mouse, and so he let him go. But a few days later, the foolish bat went blindly into the nest of another weasel. This weasel happened to be a bitter enemy of birds, and he soon had the bat under his claws, ready to eat him. You are a bird, he said, and I'm going to eat you cried the bat. I? A bird? Why? All birds have feathers. I'm nothing but a mouse. Down with all cats is my motto. And so the bat escaped with his life a second time. Set your sails with the wind. The Quack Toad An old toad once informed all his neighbors that he was a learned doctor. In fact, he could cure anything. The fox heard the news and hurried to see the toad. He looked the toad over very carefully. Mr. Toad, he said, I've been told that you cure anything, but just take a look at yourself and then try some of your own medicine. If you can, cure yourself of that blotchy skin and that rheumatic gait. Someone might believe you. Otherwise, I should advise you to try some other profession. Those who would mend others should first mend themselves. The Fox Without a Tail A fox that had been caught in a trap succeeded at last, after much painful tugging, in getting away. But he had to leave his beautiful bushy tail behind. For a long time he kept away from the other foxes, for he knew well enough 
that they would all make fun of him and crack jokes and laugh behind his back. But it was hard for him to live alone, and at last he thought of a plan that would perhaps help him out of his trouble. He called a meeting of all the foxes, saying that he had something of great importance to tell the tribe. When they were all gathered together, the fox without a tail got up and made a long speech about those foxes who had come to harm because of their tails. This one had been caught by hounds when his tail had become entangled in the hedge. That one had not been able to run fast enough because of the weight of his brush. Besides, it was well known, he said, that men hunt foxes simply for their tails, which they cut off as prizes of the hunt. With such proof of the danger and uselessness of having a tail, said Master Fox, he would advise every fox to cut it off if he valued life and safety. When he had finished talking, an old fox arose and said, smiling, Mr. Fox, kindly turn around for a moment, and you shall have your answer. When the poor fox without a tail turned around, there arose such a storm of jeers and hooting that he saw how useless it was to try any longer to persuade the foxes to part with their tails. Do not listen to the advice of him who seeks to lower you to his own level. The Mischievous Dog There was once a dog who was so ill-natured and mischievous that his master had to fasten a heavy wooden clog about his neck to keep him from annoying visitors and neighbors. But the dog seemed to be very proud of the clog and dragged it about noisily as if he wished to attract everybody's attention. He was not able to impress anyone. You'd be wiser, said an old acquaintance, to keep quietly out of sight with that clock. Do you want everybody to know what a disgraceful and ill-natured dog you are? Notoriety is not fame.